Hey, it's Mike, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to edit video using QuickTime Player for the Mac. Yes, along with being able to record audio, video, and your computer screen, you can use QuickTime Player to edit video. Now, you might be asking, why would I use QuickTime Player to edit video when I have much more capable video editing software like iMovie or Final Cut Pro? Well, QuickTime Player is great for simple video editing tasks where you don't necessarily want to create a whole iMovie or Final Cut Pro project just to get the job done. Let's hop onto the computer so I can show you how to edit video using QuickTime Player. So here we are on my Mac. I'm running Mac OS Catalina 10.15.2 for this tutorial. And the first QuickTime Player editing feature I want to show you is the trimming function. So if you want to trim away any unwanted parts of your video, you can do that in QuickTime Player by first opening your video in QuickTime Player. And you can do that by first locating your video. Mine is on the desktop here. Selecting it by right clicking or control clicking and selecting open with and selecting QuickTime Player. And you can see my video opens in QuickTime Player. I'm just gonna close out of that. Another way to open your video in QuickTime Player is with QuickTime Player already running. You go up to File, Open File, navigate to the file you want to trim, select it, and select Open. Now with your file loaded into QuickTime Player, to trim, you just go up to Edit, and from the drop-down list, select Trim. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command-T. And the trimming interface appears with this yellow bounding box. Now each end of the box here has a handle. Click and drag the left handle to set where you want your video to begin or the end point. And then click and drag the right handle to set where you want your video to end or the out point. Now to see the part of the video that will remain after the trim, this area inside this selected region here, Select the play button on the left side of the interface. See, in my and you can see this thin red playhead moving across the, the track as the video plays. Video is a takeaway. To stop playback, you just select the, the pause button. Skip. Now you can also use the space bar on your keyboard to start and stop playback in the selected area here. Now if you want to quickly scan through the selected area, you can do that by placing your cursor inside the selected area, then use the scroll function on your mouse to scrub through the video. If you're using a trackpad, like say on a laptop, you can scrub through the selected area by dragging two fingers across the trackpad. Or you can simply place your cursor inside the selected area and then click and drag to scrub through the video. Now, once you've set the beginning and end points of your trim, you just go over to this trim button on the right of the interface and select it to finalize your trim. Now, when you do that, all the video and audio outside of the selected area here will be removed. And let's just do that. You can see that. And you're quickly popped back into the default QuickTime player interface. Now, if you're not happy with the trim that you made, you can undo it by going up to Edit and from the menu selecting Undo Trim. Now, let's just say I'm happy with the trimmed video that I made. Well, now I'm going to save it as a new video file. And to do that, you click on this little red X button near the top of the QuickTime Player window. And you get this Export As dialog. So you can just enter a new unique name for your trimmed file, find a location to save it, and select Save. I'm just going to cancel out of that. You can also save the trimmed file by going up to the QuickTime Player menu and going to File, Save. And you get the Save dialog. Again, just enter a new unique name for your trimmed file, find a location, and select Save. And when you use the Save method, QuickTime Player appears to save the trimmed file as a new file in the same format 
as the original file. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. A third method to save your file is to go up to the QuickTime Player menu and go to File, Export As, and save out your file in one of the available formats. Again, you get the same Export Save dialog. Enter a new unique name, find a location to save, and then just hit Save. So that's how you can quickly trim video files using QuickTime Player. But you can do more than just trim videos. You can also use QuickTime Player to split videos into multiple segments or clips and then manipulate those clips in all kinds of ways. Let me show you. I'm just going to close this QuickTime Player window by hitting the little red X. And instead of saving, I'm just going to select Delete to get rid of this file and start fresh. And I'm just going to open my original video file in QuickTime Player again. So to split a video in QuickTime Player, you first need to bring up QuickTime Player's Clips interface. And to do that, with your QuickTime file open and selected, you go up to the top menu and select View, Show Clips. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command-E and you get QuickTime Player's Clips interface. At least that's what I call it. Now if I click on my video in the Clips interface, I get this yellow outline around it, which tells me that my video is one big clip. Now to split this big clip, I'm first gonna go to the spot where I want to make the split, and I can do that by selecting the play button on the left here, which starts playing my clip. And you can see that familiar thin red playhead moving along there. Now when I get to the spot where I want to make the split, I can select the pause button to stop playback. Now a faster way to select the point where you want to make the split is to hover your cursor over the red playhead. And when you do that, you get this vertical bar with arrows. So now I can click and drag the playhead to the spot where I want to make the split. Again, if you're using a trackpad on a laptop, you can drag two fingers across the trackpad to quickly scrub the playhead through your clip to find the point where you want to make the split. Likewise, you can use the scroll function on your mouse to do the same thing. Now when you've set the playhead at the point where you want to make the split, you go up to the QuickTime menu and choose Edit Split Clip. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command Y. My single video clip is now two clips. Now I'm going to make another split. So I'll place the red playhead at the point where I want to make the split. Then I'll go up to the QuickTime Player menu and select Edit Split Clip. And now I have three clips. And I can manipulate these clips in all kinds of ways. I can select a clip by left clicking on it or select multiple clips by shift left clicking. I can delete a clip by selecting it, then hitting the delete key. This is a quick way to remove unwanted content from the middle of your video where the trimming function only removes material from the beginning and the end of your video. I can undo the delete action by going up to the QuickTime menu and selecting Edit, Undo, or using the keyboard shortcut Command Z or Z, again depending on where you live. I can rearrange clips by simply clicking and dragging them around in the interface. I can also duplicate a clip by selecting it, then holding down the Option key, then clicking and dragging out a new copy of the clip and placing it on the clip's timeline. And if I need to, I can trim the beginning and end of any clip in this timeline by double-clicking on the clip. You see you get the familiar trimming interface with the yellow selection area. So now if you look at this, the content within the selection area, this yellow selection area, is what's currently showing 
in the clip's interface timeline. This area outside the yellow selection area is the rest of the clip's content not currently showing. So you can just click and drag the left handle to set where you want the clip to begin or the endpoint. Click and drag the right handle to set where you want the clip to end or the out point. Now once you've set the beginning and end points of your trim, you just go over to the trim button here on the right of the interface and select it to finalize your trim. Now when you do that, all the video and audio outside of the yellow trimming bar is going to be hidden in the clip's interface. Let's just hit that trim button and you can see you're popped back into the clip's interface. Now if you're not happy with the trim you made, you can undo it by going up to the QuickTime Player menu and selecting Edit and from there selecting Undo Trim. So when you trim a clip here in QuickTime Player's Clips interface, you're essentially changing the clips in and out points in this clips timeline. But there's more. You can flip and rotate clips here in QuickTime Player. So to do that, you just select a clip, then go up to the QuickTime Player menu and select Edit and you can see you have all these choices here. You can rotate the clip left. You can rotate it right. You can flip it horizontally or flip it vertically. And you can see you also have keyboard shortcuts for all of these functions. I'm just gonna return this clip to its original state. So you can see you can do a lot with a video in QuickTime Player using this Clips interface. It works very much like the timeline in more traditional video editing applications. But here's where things get interesting. Because you see, you're not limited to working with a single video in QuickTime Player. You can combine and edit clips from different video files. Let me show you. So I'm going to start fresh here by just deleting this edited QuickTime video file I created. And I'm just going to open up my original file again in QuickTime Player. So I have this video open in QuickTime Player. Now let's say I want to add several finished videos to this video to create a, a compilation, like say for a demo reel of some kind. Well, I can do that easily using just QuickTime Player. I don't have to go into another editing application. So with this QuickTime window selected, I'm just going to go up to the QuickTime Player menu and select Edit, Add Clip to End. And you notice the QuickTime Player interface automatically changed to that Clips interface. And I'm presented with a dialog window. So I just locate the video I want to add to the end of my existing video and then select Choose Media. And the entire video file I selected is added to the end of the clip's timeline in this first video where I can treat it like any other clip. I can click and drag it to a different position. I can trim it by double clicking it. I can even split it if I need to by placing the red playhead where I want to and choosing Split Clip from the QuickTime Player Edit menu. So the Add Clip to End function is pretty convenient. But let me show you something else. I'm going to open up a second video file in QuickTime Player and I'm just going to place it beside this first file that I have. So let's say this second video file I open contains a shot that I want to add to my first video here. Well, it's really simple. I'll make sure this second video file that I opened on the left is selected. Then I'll go up to the QuickTime Player menu and select 
view, show clips. And the QuickTime player interface for the selected video changes to clips mode. So I'm going to navigate to the shot that I want to extract from this video by clicking and dragging the red playhead. Now once I've found the shot, I'll set the playhead at the beginning of the shot, then go up to the QuickTime player menu and select Edit Split Clip. And then I'm going to do the same thing at the end of the shot. So now I'm going to find the spot in my first video on the right here where I want to insert the shot from the second video on the left. So I'll select this first video on the right. Then I'll go up to the QuickTime Player menu and select View Show Clips to put this video into clips mode. Then I'll navigate to the spot where I want to insert the shot from the second video by clicking and dragging the red playhead. When I get to the spot that I want, I'll go up to the QuickTime Player menu to Edit Split Clip. So next, I'm going to go back to the second video on the left here, and I'll click to select the shot that I split out. Then I'm just going to drag the shot over to my first video, or the master video. And you can see I get this plus symbol on my shot that tells me I'm dragging a copy of the shot as opposed to moving the shot entirely. And then I just drag the shot to that split point and drop it into place. And again, like any other clip in this clips interface, I can click and drag this shot to a different spot if I want to. I can trim it by double clicking it. I can flip it. I can rotate it. And you can do this split clip, drag and drop edit procedure using as many different source videos as you need to. We'll go down so you can see you can do text. quick and simple cuts only editing using just QuickTime Player. Now to save this edited video as a new video file, you just click the little red X on the QuickTime Player window and you get that export as dialog. Enter a new unique name for your edited video file, find a location to save it, and select Save. Another way to save your edited video is to go up to the QuickTime Player menu and select File, Export As, and save out your video file in one of the available formats. Again, you get the same Export Save dialog. Enter a unique name for your file, find a location, and hit save. Now mysteriously, you can't use the file save command after splitting clips in QuickTime Player. It's grayed out in the file menu. I often use QuickTime Player to trim off the messy beginning and end of a QuickTime Player screen recording or the recording of a live stream made with OBS. And that add clip to end function can be useful, particularly if you're working on a big project that's made up of separate chapters or modules. You can edit each individual chapter or module in your video editing application and then combine them all together into one big video using QuickTime Player. If you're looking for more QuickTime Player video magic, have a look at these videos on my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.